All right. Mm. What is anger? Well, before I answer this question, I'd probably like to say that there are two types of it. Mm -hmm. and, and one type is related to our childhood and the other type is related to most of what we're going to speak about next. Sure. <laughs> most people's anger has nothing to do with their childhood anger, unfortunately. Most people's anger has a lot to do with what they want to express as an adult for reasons that they have as an adult to, su to suppress their fear. Uh -huh. So we need to firstly see that a childhood anger expression is going to be very, very different to an adult anger expression. Yeah. Childhood anger expression is generally not projected at anyone else. It, it, it doesn't blame the world or the universe for it. It feels the pain of the hurt and the resistance, its own resistance to the pain of the hurt that's within. Mm -hmm. And that's the kind of anger some people have mm -hmm. to feel. Um, and I say some people because, uh, you know, obviously sometimes we were, we got so goaded as children that we started to get angry and then that was also suppressed so obviously it's an emotion that we have to feel as adults as, a, we have to as let adults we have to yeah. connect to that childhood expression of the anger but when we do connect to that childhood expression of the anger we will not be projecting it upon anyone mm -hmm. we will not be yelling and screaming at somebody mm -hmm. we'll be feeling it internally and and expressing it to ourselves generally so it's very, very different to the type of anger that we're now going to talk about, <laughs> which is the most common anger yeah. that everybody has. Can I just clarify, you said we'll be expressing it to ourselves. You don't necessarily mean towards ourselves, no, do you? You I mean, mean just in, a, in an, an environment, environment where we ourselves are alone yeah. and where we feel the pain of our own resistance. Yeah which is very, very different than blaming everybody else for, for, for things, which is what most people's anger is for. Yeah. And also um, we start to recognise as a child that it was, a, a desire, it was our desire to feel powerful in very powerless situations. Yeah. And we allow ourselves to feel the grief associated with that kind of anger. And you'll, you'll feel the age of the anger too under those circumstances. So if the anger was created when you were five, you will feel like you're five years old going through it. Mm. And, and you won't be expressing it to people because it, uh, the reality is as a child, you didn't express it to people. So, so you know, that's the reason why it was suppressed because yeah. you didn't express it. Yeah. So the reality is you won't be projecting it at other people because you never would have chosen to do such a thing as a child. Yeah. So, you know, so you'll just feel it mm. and feel the pain of it. And that's not the anger that we're now going to speak of. Okay, so okay. let's speak of this. <laughs> this is the... the most common form of anger. This is the most common form yep. of anger that we're now going to speak of. Mm -hmm. The most common form of anger is a desire to, to have, sorry, uh, it's an unmet desire to have your addictions met. So, so maybe I'll so it, it arises. Can we say that again? Yeah, it's, yeah. it's probably yeah, not yeah. the right thing to say. It arises yeah. because you have not met your addictions. Yeah. In other words, the average person creates a whole set of addictions which are all about denying, suppressing, um, resisting or substituting their hard childhood emotions, their, yeah. their causal emotions, their painful emotions. Mm -hmm. uh, so they want to suppress and deny all of those things. So what they do is they create a whole layer of addictions. Yeah. When their addictions are no longer met by their environment or by the substance or by the physical act, yeah. they revert to rank anger and rage. Mm -hmm. Now, anger ranges from, it, it's a stored energy, yeah. so, right? It's an energy that yeah. can be stored or expressed. In motion, yeah. When it's in motion, when it becomes an emotion, it will be expressed as slight, ignore, uh, slight annoyance right the way through to extreme violent rage. Yeah. Right. It can be any of it can anything be anything in, in between that yeah. range. Yeah. So if whenever we talk about anger, we are talking about a group of emotions, not just a single emotion. Yeah. And a group of emotions ranging from just a tiny little bit of annoyance right the way through to extreme rage. And and the other thing about this anger, if you like, is that it is that it is a desire to feel certain things that cause it. So. So it's not only just a desire to get your addictions met, uh -huh. but rather a desire when your addictions aren't met to get them met. <laughs> Does that make sense? So, sure. so, so, it's so, a, it's so initially when we want our addictions met, we're quite gentle with it all. 
Uh -huh. Does that make sense? We, we generally, you know, we're gentle with the people around us. We're gentle with the substances. We go, oh, that feels nice. And we have a bit more of that. Yeah. But, but after a while, it becomes non-satisfying. Or if it ever does become unsatisfying, we are no longer satisfied in having our addictions met that way. It's not enough for us. Mm -hmm. and, and when it's not enough for us, now we revert to the anger-based feeling. With the anger-based feeling gives us a lot of things which we'll go through. I think we've listed four things that it gives us that that we'll, we'll need to go through. Yeah, one or by one. really, why we use it. Correct. What, we, what we're we attempting it. to do by what we're attempting getting to get. Angry. Yeah. yeah, when we get angry. Yes. So, so we need to understand these particular things about anger. And this is the kind of anger that is completely out of harmony with love. Mm -hmm. It's got nothing to do with our childhood experience at all. In mm -hmm. fact, it's quite the opposite. It's the denial of our childhood experience that causes this kind of anger. Yeah. So we're trying as hard as we can to deny what we experience or need to, that we, the experience we locked up as a child. Yeah. And so we revert to this kind of anger instead. So this is, that's very important what you just said. So the expression of this kind of anger does the opposite of helping our soul to grow. Correct. It, does, right. it damages our soul yeah. and it damages the souls of others. And particularly if we become violent with it, it's extremely damaging to our soul and the, and the souls of others. Okay, so, so uh, can I clarify that a bit more? Sure. Because um, obviously you've said this kind of anger can be stored also. It can be stored. Or it can be in motion. It can be in motion. And expressed. Yes. yes. So, but when we're expressing this kind of anger, we're actually heading away from any kind of causal emotion. We're, try, we're actively trying to suppress our childhood experience. We're using this kind of anger as a tool to yep. suppress causal emotions which will help us heal. Yeah. So it's, it's, not, it's not even, there's of no, it's of no benefit to us to even experience this kind of anger. Okay. There's, there's no single benefit to even experience it, really. Yeah. Yeah. We need to find what's under it. Now, sometimes when you experience it, you will find what's under it. Yeah. But, but you need to experience it in a very, very controlled environment like if you're ever going to not damage yourself or other people. Mm -hmm. And this is where you need to be completely alone experiencing this kind of anger. Otherwise, you are definitely going to damage yourself and other people. Right? And even if you're alone, there are times when you are damaging other people with it. Yeah. So particularly if they are open to the absorption of the emotion, then you're definitely damaging other people with it, even if you're alone. Mm. So I know that later on in this series, we're going to ask, we've got questions from people yes. who uh, that and, speak to that. Yes. So. And we need to also say that it, this kind of anger is the result of denial. It's yes. the result of suppression. It's the result of resistance. It's the result of a substitution. We want the substitute. Mm -hmm for the harder emotion. And so it's all about using our will to get the substitute. Yeah. So it's got nothing to do with using our will in harmony with love anymore. Yeah. It's got everything to do with using our will to get the substitute done, to, mm -hmm. to get the effect we want. Yeah. Right? And that is completely out of harmony with love. So that's going to damage our soul every time we engage it. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about what we're trying to do with yes. this kind of anger. Yes. So the first thing is, to control or manipulate the environment back into supporting our addictions. Correct. So that's the primary reason why we revert to this kind of anger. We want whatever is happening in our environment to go back to the way it was. Yeah, because <laughs> that's where addictions were being met and we felt further distanced from... From the true causal emotion that we need to feel. Yep. So, so we're using anger as a tool to change our environment mm -hmm. back to the condition that's unloving. Yeah. So and actually we're trying to force our environment to become more unloving to suit our addiction. Yeah. And this is why it's damaging because it's, it's trying to force other people or things in our environment to meet our own unloving state. Mm -hmm. And that's a very, very unloving choice. It is. Yep. And in prior discussions today, you've talked about how God's laws are operating to help expose what is suppressed within us. Mm -hmm. And we're acting in addiction to suppress it further mm -hmm. rather than have it exposed. Yes. And then when we act in this anger, we're even acting further out of harmony with God's laws, aren't we? Correct. We're saying... We're now resorting to violence. Yeah. Because even if it's emotional, it's still violence. 
you're, you're trying to force the environment, some, something or someone in the environment, to go back to their old behaviour. Mm -hmm. That's not honouring free will at all. Mm -hmm. It's not honouring the free will of people in your environment. And it's also not honouring the fact that actually they're more loving to you when they don't do that. So, so it, it's not honouring love at all. Yes. It's not honouring truth at all. Yeah. In fact, it's in complete denial of love, truth, and also complete denial of a person's free will. It's, it's, the, it's the result of you not wanting to take personal responsibility for what's inside of you. Mm -hmm. And that is a very, very damaging course of action. And most people resort to it because it, it's, it gets their environment because it go back to where it was before. Yeah. And, and it's very, very damaging action. Yeah. Very damaging action. One of the most damaging things you can do to your soul is to resort to that kind of anger. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, to control or manipulate the environment back into supporting our addiction? Yes. Yep. So that's number one. Number one. Yep. Number two, to punish our environment for not supporting our addiction. Yes, this is even darker again. Yeah. Because basically what we're saying to our environment is we're saying, you're not doing what I want you to do. So now what I'm going to do is, not only am I going to force you to do what I want you to do, but I'm going to hurt you for not doing it. Yeah. So this is like wanting to punish or hurt, harm somebody because they didn't meet your addictions. Yes. And that's a very damaging course of actions. It's, it's not very far from that, that most people, the, the reason why most people who die and pass, pass into the hells of the spirit world is because they frequently have this emotion. Mm -hmm. This emotion that they feel completely willing to punish other people mm -hmm. for what those other people didn't do or should have done for them. Yeah. 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 And, and it's a very, very damaging course of action to take for your own soul and for another, towards another. And so some some real life examples of this might be um, a parent belting a child yes. or a person. So a parent resorting to violence. Yep. Uh, just because the child didn't do something the parent wanted. Yep. Yes. And it's a punishment rather than just a rather yelling match to get them to do what they want. Yeah. which might be the first form of anger. Correct. The second form is taking it beyond that to actually physically harming. Harming the child. Yep. Yep. And creating violence towards the child yep. from a physical perspective as well as an emotional one. Yep. So the first level, you could say, that we yep. went through creates emotional violence. Mm -hmm. The second level is re willing to resort to physical violence generally. Yep. Yep. It's a desire to punish another person. It's a desire to make their life hard, make their life difficult. Mm -hmm. to make their life more difficult than it currently is. As soon as you have that emotion, you're way out of harmony with love yeah. at that point. And so um, in the context of, say, a relationship, mm -hmm. when um, I have a codependent addiction mm -hmm. that you've been meeting for me... Yes, so let's say, you know, I make you feel safe and secure. Safe and secure. We get in a situation where I no longer feel safe and secure. So let's say I lost my job. Yep, lost your job. And so we're not going to regular income anymore. You no longer feel safe I and feel secure. Terrible. I don't want to feel terribly afraid. Mm -hmm. My addiction to feeling safe and secure that was met by you and your job is no longer there. Yep. So, so, I don't, uh, so you start projecting in me that I've got to go and get a job. Get a job, hurry up. Every, every morning before, you know, at 7am, I'm yelling at you. Or even just on. doing the manipulative thing. For yep. example, just going, you know, oh, I've got to get you up. You know, why don't you go out today? Why don't you, you know, making all these suggestions. Yeah. And it's, you're not making them for my sake. You're making yeah. them for your own. Yeah. You, you're making them to, so, so that you don't have to feel certain things. Yeah. Which is selfish. Yeah. Mm. Yep. So that would, be a, that would be an example of the first, of the first type, of, type anger. of anger. So whether it's overt or covert, it there's a It doesn't matter even if it's covert. It's like, oh, I'll make on. you ricky and I'll get you ready and all yep. that kind of stuff. Good on you. Off That's you all go. covert rage. Covert rage, yep. 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 Um, and then, if, but if it was to take it to the second level mm -hmm. of punishing, then after three months and you still haven't got a job, I might resort to going... Well, you useless. The problem is you are lazy. The problem is you and trying to then attack your character or nature, or attack what my situation personally. Yes, that would be an example of punishing. That'd be a, you're now trying to punish the person for no longer allaying your fear. So that's when we get into a darker state with this. Much anger. darker state with the anger now. Gotcha. So it might not have resorted to anything physical. But you know, you're now in a violent state with this anger and you're now quite 
um, what, what's the word I'm looking for? It's probably, you're, you're now use, not only using emotional manipulation techniques now, you're using outright attack now yes. to try and manipulate the person into changing their behaviour. Yeah. Right, so that, that's very, very damaging now. You, you, and you might, you, you know, you'd be saying probably at that stage, you'd be saying very cutting things, you try to be humiliating. And if you don't resort to physical violence, you'll come close at times. Mm, mm. Mm, you'll okay. yell and scream and you throw things and whatever. Yeah, mm. so that's, thank you for clarifying that. I wanted to make it clear that we can punish without physical violence, can't we? Certainly, yeah. certainly, yeah. You can even do things like, oh, stuff this, I'm going to go and have sex with somebody else who makes me feel safe. Wow, well, yeah. Right, which means you've said nothing to the person that made you feel unsafe and you've got no idea inside of you why you went and had sex with somebody else, but you felt drawn to do so just because that person made you feel safe somehow and you felt sexually attracted to them as a result. Mm -hmm. And that is an act of rage. An act of rage and addiction on your part. And addiction on your part, yeah. 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 Very damaging actions. And, and, you know, if you examine society in the world, you, you see this happening all the time every day, <laughs> in these kind of actions. Yeah, yeah, we do. Yeah. And we don't call it anger necessarily. No, we don't. We, we often call it, you know, completely different things. Oh, that person's looking after themselves now. Or, oh, that person's got some self-worth now. No. Wow. <laughs> Oftentimes yeah. they're just enraged and they, they are using passive aggressive or aggressive ways to, to, to manipulate their environment to get back their addictions. Mm. Yeah. Okay, third type third of type. anger. We blame our environment for not supporting our addictions. Yes, what this is, is a bit like? different to punishment yep. in the sense that we're basically saying our environment is responsible for the reason why we're not having our addictions met. In other words, we're not seeing it as a personal responsibility even for our own addictions to be met by ourselves. Yep. We think the environment is responsible for our addictions to be met and our environment is also responsible for to help us suppress our deeper emotions. Uh -huh. And, and so we blame externally. We, we blame everyone else other than ourselves. In other words, we no longer take personal responsibility for any of our own feelings about what is happening. Right. Uh, and that, that is an external blame of other people, of other things, in order to avoid taking personal responsibility. So what would an example of that be? Um, blaming the government, blaming the train system, blaming the... the is oh, I had, in the previous example, yeah. I had sex with him because he's attractive. There's a blame of your environment. Had nothing to do with the fact that he was attractive. It had everything to do with the fact that you didn't feel safe. Right, <laughs> right. So, so, so you're blaming the environment for the action you took, having sex with somebody who's not your marriage partner. Yeah. Right? You're blaming you know, it on something that you think, you know, he was attractive and that's why I did it when it had nothing to do with why you did it. Yeah. It, the reason why you did it was because you were in denial of certain emotions, in particular emotions of safety and security, and he made you feel safe and secure, so you had sex with him. Yeah. You know? So it's almost like um, a bit of misdirection. It's a, it's a bit of saying... Uh, it's I'm a way to avoid personal responsibility yeah. every time. I'm a victim of this circumstance, Correct. whatever it is. Yeah, we, we portray ourselves as victims of the circumstance and we're not to blame for our actions. Yeah, gotcha. <laughs> yes. So I'm punishing you right now and I'm also being manipulative right now, but I'm not to blame for my actions. It's because you did something. Mm. And again, this is very dark, isn't it? Very dark behaviour. Yeah. Yeah. Very dark behaviour. Any person who engages in that behaviour will, will be in the hells of the spirit world. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Doesn't matter what they, their face portrays or yeah. you know anything else. They will arrive in the hells of the spirit world yeah. if they pass right at, right at that point. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Okay. Fourth type yep. of anger. Yep. Um, it's when we use anger to feel powerful and avoid feeling weak. Yes. Um, this is a very common use of anger, right? The use of anger to avoid the powerless emotions. Yep. So powerless emotions are emotions like fear and terror and you know, sadness and grief. They are emotions where we don't feel powerful anymore. We don't feel like we're in control anymore. We don't feel like we've got our self-determination anymore. And so what we do is we re revert to rage or anger 
in order to feel powerful and feel like we have control again. Yeah. And sometimes we're even angry at ourselves or angry at other people in that state. It doesn't yeah. really matter as long as we feel powerful in that state. Does that make yeah. sense? And when we feel powerful, we get to avoid all the powerless emotions. Right? Yeah. And so that's one of the reasons why we revert to anger as well, to, in order to feel the power of it. Because anger is a very a strong emotion and often we do very strong things when we're angry. Yeah. Um, whereas when we see, think of emotions like fear or sadness, we don't see them as strong emotions. We see them as weak emotions generally. Society sees them as weak emotions generally. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, reverting to a strong emotion so we can avoid the appearance of having a weak one is a very common reason for why people get angry. Yeah. And men in particular do this. Because yeah. men are told that when they're you know, afraid or sad, they're weak. And so what they do is they often revert to anger in order to feel powerful and to demonstrate their power. Mm -hmm. um, obviously it's not true. You know, in fact, you're far less powerful angry than you were feeling a causal emotion from yeah. a soul perspective. Yeah. But, but most people don't, aren't aware of that, of course. So that, that is based on a lot of false beliefs that we have taken on in our childhood about the nature of emotion and what, what equates to feeling weak and strong and powerful and powerless. Yeah, well, let's be more correct. Yeah. It's a, it equates to the childhood beliefs that were forced upon us mm -hmm. by our environment because mm -hmm. it's highly unlikely we would have taken them on unless they were forced upon <laughs> us. Because <laughs> so. taking them on or having them forced upon us made us suppress huge parts of our experience, correct, didn't it? Correct, correct. Yeah. And also in our childhood experience, many of us have experienced deep uh, feelings of powerlessness and, and, and terror mm. uh, and fear and all sorts of emotions because of what happened as a child. And so, you know, as an adult, we're trying to avoid those feelings quite strongly. So we revert to a powerful emotion in order to avoid all of these weak, these emotions we judge as weak and insipid. Yeah. And, uh, and of course our environment taught us as a child, taught us that these emotions were weak and insipid, mm -hmm. you know, fear and, and sadness was weak and insipid. And so what we do, do is the direct result of these emotions, these feelings being forced upon us. We were taught it yeah. by our environment. It's not something that we would have naturally assumed yeah. without it being taught by yeah. somebody. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the average child is very humble to their own emotions, particularly of grief. You know, most children within the first day of their life cry quite easily. Yes. And as a, it demonstrates how humble they are to the emotion of grief. That only changes because of the environment forced to change. Yeah. 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 Mm. Okay. So basically we've you've outlined four different types or and, and of course we could list more yep. i think you know it's very important for our listeners to see that we could have listed more but these gives them some uh, ideas for themselves when they revert to this adult rage that they have mm -hmm. or anger that they have or annoyance that they have what's really going on inside of themselves is is a lot of quite dark things going on inside of yourself when you revert to this behavior yep. and you need to allow yourself to experience the anger still, but as soon as you experience it using one of these four methods, you are way out of line with experiencing it in harmony with any love. Yes. You can be angry and not sin. That's, that's yeah. the reality. You yeah. can be angry and still be loving by experiencing your anger in harmony with love. All of these ways that we've already listed are all out of harmony with love. Mm -hmm. They're all ways to control, manipulate your environment, blame your environment, punish your environment, or feel powerful. And none of them work, by the way. No. None of them will get you to your causal emotion. None of them will help you get closer to God. So in a way, they're all pointless experiences yeah. unless you're feeling your anger and actually doing it in a manner that's in harmony with love, which is just feeling it. So being responsible about the expression of it. Yes, and understanding that there are a, you have it because you want some addictions met and being willing to go and find those addictions, yeah. whatever they are, to yeah. be willing to face them. Yeah. What are my addictions? Why do I get angry here? Yeah. You know? So if you look at the average guy who gets jealous of his girlfriend, he's angry because of something going on inside of him, mm -hmm. right, that's not he's not feeling safe in the relationship anymore that's why he's angry yeah 
So, so it might be something where she isn't making him feel safe. It, like, it might be something where he is unsafe. Yes. Or it might be something where he isn't, but he's just imagining he is. Yes. It could be either. But unless he, if he allows himself to feel it without projecting all the crap on her, yeah. then he'll find out, oh, no, it's because I do feel this leakage of sexual energy from you to that person, and that's what makes me feel unsafe. And sure, I've got to go and feel unsafe about that, yeah. but I think you've got an issue with the leakage of sexual energy that you've got to address <laughs> yeah. if you want to have a relationship with me, yeah, right? Yeah. So you can work through those particular issues as long as you're honest about feeling it, you know, and owning it yourself. Yeah. If... You, if, you, in, if the man in that state says, right, I'm going to get violent with you, right, if you're the woman and I'm the man in that state and I get violent with you to force you to, um, you know, to not be involved with that man or in any way, then I am completely now in a very dark state with regard to my, the exercise of my anger. Mm. I'm not owning it. I'm not feeling it. I'm not looking at the reason why I have it. I'm blaming you. I'm trying to punish you for what I believe is your creation of my anger. Yeah. And that's all out of harmony with self-responsibility, all out of harmony with love. Yeah. And, and the anger itself is generated because we don't want to be responsible Correct. for what's already in us. Correct. Yeah. The, the anger is coming from an addiction inside of us. Unless we're willing to find that addiction, we will revert to anger every time that addiction is not met. So we need to see that the anger is the direct result of our own desire to, to, to avoid our fears and our own desire to have our addictions met. Mm -hmm. And we need to see it as such. And we need to be willing at some point, if we ever want to be close to God or any, ever want to love, we need to be willing at some point to go, I want to see what the addiction is. I want to feel that addiction instead of getting angry all the time. I want to feel the fear that I have that's underneath that addiction. You know, I want to feel what's driving me towards this rage. And, and it's only then that the rage will dissipate. Yeah. The rage will dissipate when you're willing to feel the actual addiction itself and to feel the terror or fear that drives it. Mm -hmm. Then you won't have any problem with the rage anymore. Yeah. It'll be a, something that's rare in your life if it ever occurs at all. Yeah. 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 Thank you. It's a great description and yeah. very comprehensive yeah. um, explanation of the different damaging ways we frequently use anger. And what I'm thinking about as you're speaking about that is that um, we can do all these things, control or manipulate, punish, blame, feel powerful and avoid feeling weak. Mm. And it's not necessarily through a screaming rage. Sometimes it's a mild sense of what we call frustration, but we are actually acting to control and punish and blame through that. Yeah, you can even emotion. feel it as a pushiness. Yes. Emotional pushiness. You, you meet a lot of people who never revert to like overt rage, who are Im terribly emotionally pushy. They, are, they have huge amounts of anger in them. Mm. And, and they, are, they have learnt to not express their anger verbally or emotionally. They've learnt to become pushy emotionally, yeah. to try to force you emotionally. They become um, persistent people who just nag and nag and nag and nag. And mm -hmm. there's another expression of anger. Mm -hmm. So there's, there are so many passive aggressive ways to express anger that the majority of people learnt many ways because as a child, they couldn't overtly express anger. They couldn't do it as it really felt, as they really felt it. So they learnt to do it in different ways. Yeah. They learnt it by becoming resistive, by manipulation, by control, by all sorts of other methods, but it's still anger. Yeah. It's still anger driving the behaviour. Yeah. Yeah. And at some point they're going to have to connect to that anger and feel it and feel what the addiction is driving it. Mm. Yeah. We see many people in that state. Like there are many people who come along to our sessions after five years, they've not got beyond their anger. Mm -mm. and they believe they have. Mm -hmm. They believe they're no longer angry or whatever and they're just highly manipulative individuals who have no desire to get into any of their addictions. Yeah. And, uh, and the more we tell them, the more enraged they become. And eventually they burst. <laughs> <laughs> and usually it's not pretty. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, because it usually it means that, you know, they harm a lot of people once that they burst. Yeah. They, many people have no idea how to experience anger in a way that doesn't sin. Yeah. 
you know, and, and the reason is because they don't want to take any responsibility was, for it. I was going to say, it's not like you haven't told us all how to do it. Mm -hmm. It's just there's a desire lacking to do it. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it requires, a, again, a great deal of exercise of your will to experience your anger in a way that's in harmony with more love mm -hmm. than it does to do all of these other things we've been talking about. Yeah. And most people don't have that much desire to have their addictions confronted. Mm -hmm. They have a desire to have their addictions met, yeah. not confronted. Yeah. And hence, the anger is often the common way of you know, reverting or getting the environment back to meeting your addictions. Yeah. 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 So that's, that's what anger is. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a, such a damaging emotion. It, 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 as it in itself, has, is, is the most common emotion in the hells of the spirit world. Yeah. Anger and fear are yeah. the two most common emotions in the spirit world, in, in the, the hells. hells. Yeah. And, uh, and those two emotions uh, obviously rage from, you know, range from very, from slight annoyance to, and then slight you know, anxiety to, you know, to whatever it is, the it, other extreme terror, yeah. in terms of fear and anger. But the reality is they are both very, very, very damaging emotions on this planet and also in the spirit world, mm. in, the, in the hells of the spirit mm. world. And they are very damaging emotions to the soul of an individual. Mm -hmm. And unless you're willing to feel them, you will never progress, yeah. ever. And there are many people who have never progressed for thousands of years as a result of being resistive to truly feeling their anger or their fear rather than just reverting to their anger in order mm. to get their addictions met. Mm. Yeah. yeah, we've talked a lot about codependent addiction, haven't we? And um, it's almost sometimes we have it between us on earth, we have it between us and individual and spirits. spirits. But sometimes it feels to me like at the moment the earth and the lower spheres of the spirit world are in one huge, huge codependence. codependence. Mm. Yeah, where fear and anger is fostered yes. and, and, and honoured honored in yes. the lower realms. Yes. And, and I'll give you an example, earth. a few examples. You know, I think we mentioned a few in other FAQs, but you know, this, this whole thing that happened with World Vision. Yeah. Um, that's an example. Uh, World Vision wanted to change their rules to allow for married gay couples to work in their or, in organization. their organisation. Um, there was a huge amount of anger yeah. in the Christian community, which yeah. is all based on their own addictions. Yes. None of it's loving. Yeah. Doesn't matter what reason they give. Oh, the Bible says this or whatever. None of it's loving. Yeah. None of it's in harmony with love. Yeah. And the fear of the World Vision organisation was yeah. manipulated through this anger, which was the purpose of the people who were angry. Yep. There's an example of somebody who's going to arrive in the hells. Yeah. A Christian, will that Christian who did that, those yeah. Christians who did that, will arrive in the hells yeah. because they revert, have reverted to violence and manipulation in order to get what they want. Yeah. And they're willing to even see the death of children mm -hmm. in order to get what they want. Yeah. That's how strong their manipulation of their terror, you know, the, and their manipulation they're driven by their addiction was. Mm. Mm -hmm. So there's an example. Yeah. As uh, an it's example of how the world works. Yeah. We've had recent examples in our personal life with trying to get venues for, yes. for, for us to do presentations in or, or assistance groups in. You see these examples all the time where yeah. compromises are constantly met based upon who's the person who's most angry. Yes. Now, yeah. if and we all base yeah. our life around the person who's most angry, there is not going to be any improvement in what happens on earth. No. At all. No. And, and if we do keep doing that in the spirit world, there'll be no improvement what happens in the spirit world either, yeah. in the lower spheres. Yeah. We have to learn to stop doing that. We have to learn to stop supporting anger, yeah. stop, start seeing anger as a desire in the individual to just have their addiction met yeah. and to refuse the meeting of that addiction. Yeah. We need to learn that. So, you know, these are all things we need to learn about anger. Mm. Mm. Thank you.